So this is really frustrating. Rural community in shock after Georgia health officials raid clinic vaccinating teachers. Just listen to that. Out of NBC News. Now, what have we been hearing? The schools are closed. And this is what's frustrating about these shots is that they wanted all of the frontline workers and all of the people that are important in the community that help others to get these shots. However, you hear this story right here, and this is really mind-boggling because a lot of schools are closed and you hear a lot of parents that are worried about their kids learning they're not getting enough academics and they're losing a lot of school time and you know we keep the schools closed because when we open them the kids get sick or the staff gets sick and dies You've heard stories, countless stories, and here we got teachers that are trying to get vaccinated because they want to try to get back to work so that they can teach kids. And so the rural community is in shock, okay? So this is a couple of still photos. It was a vaccinating clinic, and this is a teacher that is pictured here. There are teachers, and we can see what's going on here. Okay, so these photos end up showing up along the way. And I don't believe that this clinic was really doing anything malicious. I believe they were trying to, from what I see it from the outside here, they were trying to get teachers to be vaccinated so that they could get back to work and they could be safe around the children and inoculated. And so, so this is by Stephanie Gosk and Laura Strickler, Lisa Kavans, uh, Vazuti and Corky Sesmasko. Okay. So, says Mosco. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Sorry, I desecrated your name, but uh, this is Elberton, Georgia, a small Georgia city that was still in shock Friday, days after the state health workers raided the busiest medical clinic in the county and seized its COVID 19 vaccine supply because staffers had given doses to teachers. So, some 470 shots of the Pfizer vaccine were confiscated from the medical center of Elberton, a private clinic that had been the largest provider of vaccinations in Elbert County, leaving behind just enough medicine to guarantee second doses to people who have already been inoculated. So, everything that we have tried to do until now to vaccinate our county was just laid to waste, okay? Dr. Jonathan Poon, who works at the clinic, told the NBC News. So in addition, that's the medical center right there. And so Georgia Department of Public Health said that it would not be providing any more vaccines to the medical center for the next six months until July 27. So the Department of Health took an action after learning that the provider had been vaccinating individuals in Albert County School District who were outside of the current phase one. Now, haven't we heard this? There's different phases, and if you're not next in line, but haven't we also heard people cutting, lying, cheating, doing all other kind of things coming from outside of the community who are not even essential workers? They're not. They're not even teachers. They're not even uh, in 65 and older, they're, they're just people that want to get shots. And they're not in any of these categories. And so it says that the current phase one eligible population, you'd have to be in that, the agency said in the statement. So there is no other reason for the suspension or that what 
we have previously stated, okay, so, but in January the 29th, a letter, now we'll read more into this because I hadn't really found out if there are any other problems or as to why they shut this down, so if there are, we'll find out, won't we? So, January 29th, letter to the center, the department gave no warning it was going to seize the remaining shots on Tuesday, so they have strict strict rules about who gets these shots. However, people who are not supposed to be getting them are still getting it. But this clinic, I see their point. They were trying to give it to the teachers because the teachers, you know, that's why all these schools are closed. I get it. So moving outside the phases disrupts the allocation. Really? Okay, let's go on. The allocation process and creates the potential for many elderly citizens to not receive the vaccination in a timely manner. That's already happened. There are not only elderly people not receiving them, there are people in communities that are poor, that are homeless, that, you know, that are scared even still of these vaccination shots that won't even get them at their time is now and again, they won't even get them because of the skepticism over them. But then you have people coming from outside of the community. Somehow they're able to get them. So there's something flawed with this whole thing. But here you got this community, I'm assuming is maybe smaller. And their kids are at home. And they had to close down the schools. They're trying to get the teachers inoculated. I, I can understand what they're trying to do. I'm not saying that maybe they went about it the right way, but I get what they're trying to do. And, you know, people want their kids to try to go back to school. So moving outside of the phase they claim disrupt the allocation process. So it says, upon enrollment in the Georgia COVID vaccine program, you signed a COVID vaccination provider agreement. Okay, so here's where it gets uh, difficult because... If you sign an agreement, which is a binding legal statement, stated that you and your practice would not violate any state or federal rules related to the program. So particularly, this was a violation. So legal-wise, but I get what they were trying to do um, still. So in an interview, Dr. Chris Rustin of the Department of Health said that the clinic's actions left them no choice. I'll say I'm going outside of the phases almost a deliberate manner and was something that we could not ignore. So they're jumping on them because they're trying to vaccinate teachers. Yet what happens here, I'm in South LA and you have all these people coming from outside. They're famous or they're they're not over the age of 65 and they're somehow able to get these shots. And they don't fall in any of the, the, the lines of being a frontline worker or a vulnerable individual. These are wealthy individuals who are probably not even near 65. Some are, some aren't, however, and they're able to get the shots. And so what do you call that? I'm just throwing that out there. So going outside of the phase in the, almost is a deliberate manner was something that they couldn't ignore, he says. So and we needed to make sure that others are are vaccinating, that are vaccinating, understand that we have such limitations on our vaccine supplies because, see, it's a limited use of vaccine supplies. So that's another thing. But don't you think you want, you know, some some of these things that are really crucial to these communities to start functioning. And it is lagging because a lot of communities are still not getting access to the shots. And then I can understand trying to vaccinate the teachers. We had teachers here in Los Angeles that died. And I don't think they were vaccinated. And they wanted to push, force the kids to come back to school unvaccinated and the teachers to come back to school unvaccinated. And then they also had a law where they wanted to protect all these businesses so from, from lawsuits if people died of, of the disease, yet you can't get vaccinated yet. And so you want us to work, you want everything to run function normal, 
when things aren't normal right now. So still as recently as December the 7th, it says we're considered by the state to be in an essential group, Poon said. So adding that they were able to vaccinate about 177 school workers before the public health department shut them down, which, you know, I don't blame them in that sense. I get what Dr. Poon, Jonathan Poon was trying to do, who he works for Elberton Medical Clinic in Georgia. We felt, you know, that the state's guidance that teachers were a part of that group. Of course, I see where they're coming from. So he said this, so as as soon as we were able to move to vaccinate the essential workers, that's what we did. So the first inkling that they might have run afoul of the state was January 26th. The department called asking whether or not that we had vaccinated teachers and the doctors said. So, um, and at the time, of course, they believed that that was part of the proper procedure. So we said yes. He he admitted that they had said what they did. And in less than 48 hours, the state handed down a ruling that the vaccine status for them was suspended and that they had no longer be able to vaccinate any more individuals. So the community's reaction was a shock, he said. So everybody knew what was going on. They were hoping and anticipating that it worked out for the better. And they thought that teachers were essential workers, which I believe they are. Um, so Terry Glaud, a teacher in Albert County, managed to squeeze in her second shot. And so you'll see her picture here. Just days before they descended on her clinic, I was very lucky to not have to worry about that. She said, so she was able to get a shot before they closed them down. So she was taken aback by the news of the raid that doesn't and doesn't agree with the state mandate that teachers shouldn't have been in the first wave of vaccinations. I yeah, I have to agree with this this Terry Glaude that I thought that they would take teachers into consideration as being it so that you're working to try to help kids develop their minds and be productive citizens or move on into productive careers. They're the future, you know, and then you're helping the community, you're helping parents, and I just, I, to, to me, I still don't understand it, but everyone wants their kids in school, agreed, Glad said. So, and the way to keep them in school is to let the teachers be vaccinated along with the elderly population. It, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to agree with this. I mean, and then move down and, you know, as it is appropriate. So Marlene Lord, who is 68, got her second dose at the clinic Thursday and said that she would have gladly given her vaccination um, to a teacher. Okay, so even people who aren't teachers kind of understand why. So she, she said that, this is her, and that was her reaction, but she says she's retired. I have the ability to stay from it more than, than they do, it's stay away from it, because they can be, you know, at home right now, even in the LA, we have stay-home orders, and not everybody financially can just stay home, you know. Um, if they are staying home, they're relying on some other source to get income, EDD, and we heard the stories about that, and then are they doing little part-time jobs, but sometimes that money is not enough. And it also puts you at risk for getting this disease, as we've been hearing over and over. And uh, this woman says, and I think the more protection there is, the better it is also, because they haven't they said that the kids can get it from adults. And so if the teacher is sick, then the kids are going to get it as well. So Lord also said in the public health department did a uh, disservice. I agree. I agree with these two women that they did a disservice to the community by taking the vaccines from the clinic. They shouldn't have done that because they need it. So if something was done wrong, like what's done out here in L.A., how rich people are getting it, people coming from other communities that aren't even in the 
in any of the phases in the beginning are getting it somehow. First come, first serve. They're throwing away vaccine. If nobody's there, they don't have enough people. It's it's ridiculous out of here. But but the spread is big. Oh, we've got some people vaccinated. Yeah, those people are people who are vaccinated a lot more, but financially they're doing a little better than the people who need it the most. And so it is a lot of craziness out here. So I agree with this one what they're talking about, the teachers, the elderly, and, you know, and then I find even the elderly out here in L.A., some of them were complaining they weren't even able to get an appointment to get a shot. So, and then they closed this place down. So it's crazy because the vaccination shortage public health agencies and providers often have to make the tough choices. So Jennifer Cates, a public policy expert at the Kaiser Family Foundation, told NBC News. So there's um, this is their side of this story, how they feel about this. There's a limited supply, they say. If there's a limited supply, why have I heard stories about, and I'm adding this, that some places they have a late shipment and then if they don't find anybody to vaccinate, you also, if, if first come first serve, then they vaccinate the people out of there and they may, they may not fall into any of the, the essential worker categories. So they just are vaccine chasers and they, they're there for the vaccine and somebody that really needs it is sitting at home not knowing when they were going to get their shot. They're not even, they haven't gotten the first shot yet. And so if they get infected with coronavirus and has much, a much higher likelihood of getting sick and even dying or someone who is a frontline worker that we need in this society, really. Hmm. There's almost a Sophie's choice, they say, having to choose between some who's senior and who we know if they get infected. Okay, so Department of Health spokeswoman Nancy Nidem said that they gave the, the clinic uh, 30 minutes notice Tuesday that they were coming to collect all their vaccines. So the weekly uh, Elberton Star newspaper was heading to the presses that afternoon when publisher Gary Jones first learned of this raid taking place. And so when I arrived, five unidentified people were in and around the room where TMC stores its uh, precious Pfizer vaccines. So Jones wrote this on paper and website. So when I entered the area with the press badge clearly visible, I walked up to two men that were a part of a party of five and asked them their names and they refused to answer it at all. Okay, and so the medical center at Ableton purchased an uh, ultra cold freezer in November so that it will be equipped to store the Pfizer vaccines before the clinic received the first delivery of doses. So Jones said that he watched as two of the people removed the vaccines from the clinic freezer and reported that a woman whose ID badge bore the name Lay Hoff, Hoffacker confirmed that they were there by the authorities of the Department of Health. Hoffacker, according to the uh, LinkedIn profile, is a medical countermeasures program manager, the public health department. And her job is to dispense vaccines, medicines during public health emergencies. So all the state health workers involved in the raid are members of department's vaccine distribution team, so Nadem said. So as the department investigators secured the vaccine, Jones wrote the medical center's office manager, Brooke McDowell, videotaped what was going on. So shortly after I arrived, Hoffacker asked McDowell to sign a document stating that TMCE was voluntarily allowing this party to remove the vaccines from the ultra cold freezer, Jones wrote. McDowell refused to sign the document, so Jones said that he asked the public health department workers if they had a warrant or a court order and that the clinic staffers were crying and pleading with them to not take these vaccines away, so the department workers at the that point appeared to reconsider removing the vaccines. 
Jones wrote, but after he returned the newspaper to the surprise of the publication in the new edition, Jones said that he was informed that the department workers had removed the vaccine from the premises. So Jones told NBC News that he's following an open workers request with the state to identify the other department workers who ran rough shot in um, the clinic. And so this is the outside of the clinic, the medical center of Elberton. And so <clears throat> he has filed an appeal to overturn the suspension claim and did not knowingly break any rules or regulations or blame the error on the lack of clarification of, from the state that NBC voted. So basically, this clinic, they weren't trying to do anything malicious, is what I, the way it sounded, they assumed that teachers are essential workers. And, you know, you'd think that, that it would be, because I've seen those phases that they have. It's such a disaster here in LA County, it's ridiculous. It's like, the people that are in the phases that are supposed to get the vaccine, I'm hearing they're not even able to access the the online tool to even get an appointment. And then it's taking so long, and now there's all these other variants, these other strains of COVID out there. By the time you're able to even get your first shot, you might end up coming in contact with these diseases. If it isn't by some other person, it could be, you know, just doing your everyday things, you know, going to the store, going shopping, you know, maybe you're out, you're pumping your gas, you know, you come in contact with it some kind of way, picking it up along the way, you know, LA County is a, a large place, and, you know, if you have so many people that were sick with it, you know, how are we, how are we not to know that by the time you're able to even have a turn to get the vaccine that you'll even be able to get. So it's that's another issue. So yeah, the lack of clarification. So this confiscated the vaccines. The confiscated vaccines were redistributed to the five other providers in the rural Elberton County and South Carolina border on that border along uh, with an additional 2,100 doses, the public health department has said. So one of them is Madden Pharmacy, Madden's Pharmacy in the town of Elberton, where the owner, Don Pila, told the local NBC News affiliate that they were currently vaccinating 50 people per day and um, that the confiscating doses from the clinic did not make sense. And so to me, that's kind of an issue, he said. So it's sort of like, why would you take the fire trucks away from the fire station and put the fire trucks someplace else? Yeah, it does seem like that. I agree. So the other recipients of the confiscated vaccine at the Elberton County Health Department, um, Elberton Memorial Hospital, Med Link, and a local uh, Ingalls grocery store. So GPH said that via Medam that it stands by its decision to suspend the medical center of Elberton and its um, confident Elberton County residents have and will continue to have more than a sufficient local access to the vaccine. Under Georgia's guideline, teachers aren't eligible for the vaccine unless they're also healthcare workers. So if they were teachers that slash healthcare workers, first responders are 65 and older. And that's the same thing out here in LA County. Um, however, we have a lot of corruption and a lot of stuff that is happening where people aren't in any of this and still somehow get the vaccine. But the medical center in Elberton began vaccinating school employees last month after administering doses to high priority workers. But before contemplating the vaccine of seniors, the Atlanta Journal Constitution reported in January. So we're not going to leave it on the shelf for it to rot to ruin, McDowell told the newspaper last month. 
Of course, so the governor asked us to put shots in the arms of that, and that's what we're doing. And so county schools have been open because many of the 3,000 or so children enrolled in the district don't have an internet service. <clears throat> okay, so which would allow for virtual learning. Also, don't have, um, they, they rely on the schools for food, which clinic Dr. J. Daniel McAvoy told the newspaper because schools also provide lunches for the kids kids coming from homes, uh, which now, that's wrong now, you know, food deprived because of the loss of money and from not having jobs or short hours. So we saw it very important to get our um, school teachers vaccinated and step out and and did that, Nick Avoy said. So then we saw the guidance later, okay. And so Representative Andrew Clyde, the newly elected Republican who represents the county, declined to comment on the vaccine confiscation. His spokesman, Russell uh, Reed, said so COVID-19 vaccines are already being provided to teachers from kindergarten through high school in 25 states and Washington, D.C. But you have to fall in line that you have to be like a healthcare worker. Um, or you have to be 65 and older. So in some of those states, it is limited to select counties. But according to the new New York Times survey of the vaccination eligibility rules, so in a separate NBC News survey, teachers are eligible for COVID-19 vaccination in 22 different states. So Georgia, however, is not one of those states on either of the lists. Sitting in a building near the clinic that staffers had turned into a vaccination center pooling survey. The empty waiting room that in the days prior to the raid had a steady but socially distanced stream of patients showing up for their appointments. And so it's heartbreaking, the doctor said. Here, well, we've poured everything in the past few months to try to make it a success. So early on, Poon said that they invested $7,000 out of their own pocket on an expensive freezer capable of storing vaccine because they wanted to be part of a pandemic solution. So we were humble, he said. So we did not expect a pat on the back. We thought that this was part of the plan. And so I understand totally full well why they feel disappointed that they got raided, I don't think I'm, I'm going to have to say, for my opinion, that these, this clinic wasn't trying to do anything wrong. They were trying to do the right thing. And we, what have we been hearing? That we want to get as many people vaccinated, but the people that are getting vaccinated are not essential workers, not all of them, and somehow they're getting the shot, and then the people who really need the shots are not really getting. So, having said that, um, I don't understand. I'm scratching my head, shaking my head, trying to figure it out every day. It's something different. And now they demonize these people because they basically were trying to do the right thing. You know? um, I don't get it at all. What do you think? My thoughts are, you know, I, I think the whole thing was a disaster zone in the beginning when they started saying, well, everybody's going to be in line and they're going to wait for their turn to get their shot. And what do people do? Cut, lie, cheat, steal, manipulate. And that's what's going on. But here you have people in a town who really were trying to get their kids teachers to be vaccinated and look at the teachers some of the teachers have taught for years they they are in the category where they should be getting shots because some of them if however if they're not at the age of 65 they they still fall behind and getting shot for some reason i don't know i just think you know, the priorities on all of this has been really bad. Thanks for listening.